different in the policies that you've supported in the past. You're considered the most liberal United States senator. I, I somebody said that, and it actually was Mike Pence on the debate stage. But <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the nonpartisan GovTrack has rated you as the most liberal senator. You supported the Green New Deal. You supported Medicare for all. I'm trying to figure out if she is as far left as her voting record is, or if she is, as I suspect, simply whatever she needs to be for the next, ele next election. I actually have this theory, and I, I know John Phillips is already listening because John Phillips of the great John Phillips show joins us now. So John, I might as well just throw my theory directly to you. I have this theory, and you know you can blast holes in it, we're friends, that if Dome was actually running to be a, a city councilman in rural Wyoming, that she would have policy positions that are to the right of me. I don't think she has any policy positions outside of whatever she needs for the next election. Am I crazy? I think you're right. This was the lane that was open to her. She was someone who cut her teeth in San Francisco politics. And when you cut your teeth in San Francisco politics, you have to be a certain type of person. And she was that. And then when she ran statewide, she moderated her beliefs and moved a little bit to the right and was in a very contested election for attorney general and was able to win that election. And then when she was running in the Democratic primary, she thought the available lane was on the left. So that's where she went. Now she's got to move to the center and that's what she's going to do. The one consistent through line with her is that she wants to accumulate as much power as possible. And those people are dangerous because when that's your one loyalty, you'll do all kinds of strange things that aren't necessarily predictable. Speaking of strange things she's done, you know what? No, we don't have to go down that route, but let's, let's do this. Tr tell me, Tell me how this debate goes wrong for Trump, John. Now, you know, everyone knows what a cynic I am. I don't pretend to be, you know, flowery optimist guy, but I look at the debate rules. He can't interrupt her. She, she can't do that. I'm speaking thing. She knows nothing about policy. Trump, even if you hate his freaking guts, knows everything about what he wants and knows everything about the policy. Everything is set up for Trump to do well and win. And everything's set up for Dome to look terrible tomorrow night. So what am I not seeing, John? What, what is going to happen that Wednesday morning we're going to show up here and talk about how bad it went for us? What could happen? Well, your assessment is, is correct, I think. If you're Donald Trump, what you need to do is you need to let her talk. What's the saying? Silence is golden, but duct tape is silver. And I'm sure he'll have the impulse to try to run her over every time she opens her mouth. That's what he did to Joe Biden last time around. It didn't work. She has a very difficult time speaking in a coherent way. You get a lot of word salads. You have her on both sides of every subject that people care about this cycle. Let her talk. If you let her talk, you put her out in the middle of the ocean without a life vest. Let that happen. Let nature take its course. If you jump in and try to run her over, you'll look like a bully and you'll save her every time she starts to engage in one of these word salads or every time that she contradicts herself or contradicts a position that she took on that subject at some point in the past. This is one of these opportunities where less is more. Donald Trump doesn't have to win the debate. Donald Trump just has to be there on stage and let her talk. John, you've been covering this woman, talking about this woman for a long time. I have another theory that she is the most miserable person in America right now, knowing this debate is coming because she can't speak. She knows she can't speak. She doesn't know the issues. She knows she doesn't know the issues. It's why she does the laugh we all make fun of her for all the time that this woman has got to be in mortal fear right now of embarrassing herself on the national stage. Am I right? What I think she's looking for, and I think that she's going to spend a lot of her time prepping for this debate, doing the wrong things, she's going to look for some contrived viral moment. I was at the movies this weekend, and there was a guy who was in line getting ready to go to the movies, and he was wearing a T-shirt that had her picture on it that said, 
let let me speak or let her speak. I forget exactly what the phraseology was, but they're already marketing that merchandise. They're already selling those T-shirts. What she's looking for is some event, some exchange between her and Donald Trump where he's rude to her, she's trying to get a point across, and then she has the viral moment. Well, when you're counting on the viral moments as opposed to the substance, you're ceding a lot of ground to the opposition because most people, I think, aren't looking for some kind of YouTube moment. If you're looking for a YouTube moment, you can go into any kind of black hole you want and stay up all night finding them on YouTube. You don't need Kamala Harris for it, but that's what they're gonna try to find. They're gonna try to find a way to package her so that she is this woman that just won't let any man tell her what to do, won't let a man take her speaking time, and you know she's this this um, you know feminist, this modern feminist sort of character, and they're going to try to package her that way, as opposed to what Ryan Gerdusky calls your aunt on pills, which is kind of how the world sees her now. You say that that's not what people want to see, and I hope you're right, and I, I agree with you, but. Are we sure about that, John? It's not as if every American listens to your show or listens to my show or pays attention to this stuff. Are we 100% sure the American people as a whole, they want to hear policy, they're upset enough about the price of eggs, or are we a culture now who wants the YouTube moment? Well, I'm sure her crowd definitely wants it. But if you're trying to plan something, contrive something that's supposed to be sold as being organic, and you're not an actor, and you're not someone who does that professionally, I, it's very risky because if, if it doesn't land, oh my God, you're gonna look dumb. And you could even tell that there was a certain element of the first debate where Joe Biden, when he said that you have the morals of an alley cat, I think that that was supposed to be the moment that they came up with that was gonna lead the newspapers the next day and because the guy's demented, it, it didn't land. He, he stepped all over himself and it didn't work out the way he wanted it to. It's risky to do that because or, when organic moments happen, when something happens, it's organically funny or it is you just being quick on your feet, it's hugely beneficial because it gives you a window into who the person is. But if you're trying to have this, this moment that was written by someone else that is not you, it just makes you look like you're an imposter. It makes you look like you're uncomfortable in your own skin. And those are the problems that pre-exist for her before this debate. If I were her or I were her team, I would just focus on the substance. I would focus on trying to have some coherent plan for each of these issues. And I would have a do no harm kind of approach. But it looks like they're going in the opposite direction, and she's coming in with the razzle-dazzle. I have to, before I let you go, John, I have to ask, Grandma Vodka, she's looking more and more unhinged, and I can't honestly tell if she does have a vodka problem, if it's a pill problem, if it's an age problem. Well, here, here she was, here she was. What advice would you give Donald Trump for the debate? You're super close, I know. Yeah. You are I, close in a way. He my historic. advice, yeah. Uh, do you think he's going to show up? I do. You do? Yeah. You think? Yeah. Uh, do you know something I don't know? <laughs> <laughs> I know cowardice when I see it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, you know, I'm a Pelosi fan. As much as I loathe her, I, I've, we've had this talk a million times. I wish we had 10 of her on our side, but she doesn't look and sound good anymore, buddy. Well, when she was Speaker of the House, she had to be more controlled because she was speaking on behalf of the Democratic Caucus. And now that she's no longer Speaker of the House, and she's probably never going to be Speaker again or um, aspire to any higher office again, you're getting the real her. This is... This is the real Nancy Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi unchained. And she's also selling the book. You notice she never used to do this many interviews when she was Speaker of the House because you, you go out, you do an interview, you get your point out there, then you go back to working behind closed doors. Well, now she's trying to stir the pot as much as humanly possible. In addition to what you just played, in addition to her trying to draw heat with Donald Trump, 
You notice that she just can't stop kicking Joe Biden. She's doing interview after interview after interview where she got what she wanted. She got this guy to drop out of the race, give up the most powerful job in all the land. And then she goes on television and goes, I don't think he wrote the letter. I don't know where that letter came from. I, maybe it was AI. I don't know. Maybe maybe some writer wrote it. That wasn't Joe. I know Joe. That's not Joe. I've never been impressed with his political operation before. I mean, she just kicks the guy in the crotch with a stiletto weekly. She cannot stop doing it. There's no point in continuing to attack this guy. The guy is already done. But she just lets him have it over and over and over again. It's quite something. I would thank you for coming to my YouTube channel, but I know how brilliant it is, and I know you love it here. So subscribe and watch. We're going to start really ramping things up and putting some funny stuff, some interesting stuff out there, some collaborations. Either way, my YouTube channel is officially the place to be. So stick around.